one of Instant Replay, where we take a look at games that we grew up with, games that have gotten lost or been forgotten by today's gamers. In this episode, I'm going to take you back to 1990, to a little gaming console called the NES, and to a game based on, on a popular science fiction movie of the time, Total Recall. Total Recall was developed by Interplay and published by Acclaim and has he taking on the role of Quaid as he comes to one day and finds that his memories have been seemingly erased. In the course of trying to find answers about his past life and finding himself pursued by thugs and shady henchmen, he eventually makes a journey to the planet Mars, where he becomes caught up in stopping a madman's scheme for power. Movie tying games have a deserved reputation of being bad, as they're usually rushed to meet a movie release date and smack of quick cash-in opportunities without a lot of creative effort involved. This is true even today. At least today we have visuals light years improved over the 8-bit days, and soundtracks capable of meeting music industry standards. In the days of the NES this was not so. If a game didn't have that fun factor going for it, it likely was just all around awful. Thankfully, Total Recall was then, and still is, fun to play. I tried to figure out what made this game worth coming back to again and again. Basically, it comes down to the gameplay, which is incredibly simple in this game. In most levels, you play as Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, and there are three actions you can perform. Move, jump, and attack. That's it. But all three of these actions work as well as you could ask, and this is what keeps the game fun even after dying over and over again and you will die again and again. I'll be honest, I was never able to beat this game as a child and I still haven't gotten through it now. You start the game with a handful of lives and extra lives are pretty rare. I only know of two and one is easier to skip. Every time you die you restart at the beginning of the level you're on. More than that, once all your lives are gone you have to start the game over. No continues, no saves, nothing. On the plus side though, each level will typically only take you a few minutes to get through. This is important. The game is difficult, but since the stages are usually very fast to get through, it's easy to have a high tolerance for starting over, and the frustration point takes much longer to reach. There are really only two types of attack that Quaid slash Arnold can perform. At the beginning of the game, he has to rely on his fists. Quaid has been a peaceful guy, an everyman, and so he doesn't come strapped with a gun. But when you face off against the first boss, you take her gun and keep it with you. Luckily, the game doesn't make you keep track of ammo or anything like that, and you can only shoot straight forward, nothing fancy. But even with the added firepower, the game's tough enough. Quaid does end up ditching his gun after the X-ray metal detector level. It's an iconic moment from the movie, and it's cool to see Quaid and the security guards turn to skeletons behind the X-ray screen for this level. Eventually, in the cement factory, he does find another gun. As far as I've been able to see, the important events of the movie are accounted for. Quaid comes home from recall to find his wife trying to gun him down. He's being chased by Richter. The game shows this in still shot cutscenes between levels, and he occasionally appears in levels as well. He has to get past security at the x-ray machine and gets a mysterious call to pick up a suitcase at the old cement factory. It's on Mars that the game makes its first big mistake. Why developers feel the need, then as they do now, to include forced driving stages in otherwise good games no one will ever know. Once on Mars you have to participate in a car chase through Mars City. At least your car is able to shoot, sometimes. The goal is to avoid other cars, landmines, pedestrians shooting at you, and walls. Drive too fast and you'll careen into obstacles left and right. Drive too slow and your pursuers catch up with you and it's instant death. This is the first controller throwing tantrum inducing stage I've come across in this game. Now even though the game tells the story told in the movie, there's a lot of purely random things to be found. In the first level alone you face off against enemies that had no place in the film whatsoever. Guys who look like spies from the 50s shooting at you from trash cans like Oscar the Grouch? Check. Cars doing drive-by shootings? Check. Fists blindly punching through holes in a fence? Check. Oh, and if you walk past the dark alleyways in this level, you'll end up being pulled into them to face off against a squad of karate-kicking midgets. That's not to mention the boss of the cement factory. You'd think the bosses at least would be culled straight from the movie, right? 
but I don't remember the movie sporting a trench coat wearing hobo who throws his hat like a deadly weapon, like James Bond's odd job, do you? Well, that's still kind of forgivable, but even though Arnold can barehandedly take down armed thugs and laser firing space cannons, you've got to watch out for dogs, cats, and rats. They will mess you up. But as long as you don't look to this game to be your replacement of the motion picture experience, you should have a good time playing it. It's a retro game that's only loosely based on its source material, but controls and gameplay still work nicely today. This game will have you mowing down bad guys like Rambo. Actually forget Rambo, that guy's a pussy. You'll be more like... The Terminator. Well that's it for this first edition of Instant Replay and our look at the NES version of Total Recall. Come back and join us next time for a look at another retro video game. Thanks for joining us. Until then, goodbye.